Hey everyone, it's Catherine from 85th and Pine and in today's video we are going to show you how to use a Thunder laser from start to finish. First, I want to get into Lightburn and show you how to upload a file through there in order to print it on your Thunder laser. Now, this video is not specifically on how to use Lightburn, but I can do those videos in the future. But I am going to show you how to set your settings through Lightburn and on your the project right here. So I'm going to open up Lightburn. Now, this was included with my machine. And I'm going to go ahead and select Control-I on my keyboard to import a file on my computer. Select my file. This is an SVG file. And as you can see, this particular project, it's only about two and a half inches by three inches. However, it does look very small compared to this size of this outline. This outline right here represents the bed size of my machine. Now my Thunder Laser, I have a 35 inch bed size. So this is exactly um, what the machine is for my particular size. So that's why it, it does look bigger than, a lot bigger than my design right here. Now, just for a quick review on Lightburn, I'm going to go to the right hand side over here. This is where I'm going to do all of my settings and stuff. Now, over here, I have it on current position. So that means wherever the laser head is on my machine, if it's sitting, let's just say my laser head is sitting in the center right here, and that's where it's currently at. Well, then if I hit current position on this design, then it's going to print exactly where that laser head is sitting. Now, if I wanted absolute coordinates, meaning I'd have to select absolute coordinates and say if I wanted to print it exactly where it's sitting on this um, design right here, where this is sitting on the bed, then I would have to put place it exactly where I wanted it. And if the laser head was still sitting in the center over here, well, it's going to move right over here to where it currently is. So you have to put your material where you want it. It. But I don't usually do absolute coordinates unless I'm engraving something in particular that I have to use a jig for or something like that. So for now I'm going to use current position and just place my material where my laser head is or move my laser head to my material and cut it right where the laser head is. So this doesn't matter where you put it if you use current position. So anyway I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better. And now I'm going to work on my settings. So on the right hand side over here, it's divided up into the layers of the colors that is shown on the project. So I have red, blue, and pink as my colors, and that's what's shown up right here automatically. Now I want my red to be my cut color. So I'm going to select the red right here, and I'm going to go down to library to select my settings. And I'm going to be cutting this on white MDF that I have. And this is what I entered in for my settings right here. I use this white MDF from Laserwood Supplies, so that's just how I um, labeled mine. But anyway, I'm going to use my cut setting for the red, so I want to select cut and make sure my red is still selected and then go to assign to layer. Now that makes the speed 30 and power 60, which is what I want. And then I'm going to go to engrave, which I want my pink engraved. So I'm going to go to engrave, select that, then go up to here and select my pink and assign to layer. Now these are already assigned and selected, but it would change it if I had different settings. And finally, I want to score these blue circles around the eyes. So I'm going to go to my score setting and up to my blue line, which I want scored. And then finally, assign to layer, which makes it speed 100 and power 10. So now it's all ready to go. I'm going to go back to my laser button right here. And you can do this a couple of ways if you want to send this to your machine. I would have to plug in my cord to do that. So I'd be connected from my computer to my machine. And I click send and it goes right to my laser. And I could print it from my laser machine by pressing a button. I usually don't do that. I usually just do everything from my computer just because it makes it easier for me. So 
Instead, I'm going to show you in just a minute how to get everything set up on the machine. But once it's once the machine is ready to go, I have my material in and where I want it. Then I would come back here and select start and that's when it would get ready to go. So let's go ahead and head over to the machine and I will show you how to start that up. All right, so now we are at the machine. So let's go ahead and turn it on, get that started so you can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go over to the switch down here. This is the power switch. We got a laser switch and a main switch. We need to turn both of those on or else it's not gonna work properly. So go ahead and flip those both on. You'll hear that loud beeping, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> But anyway, now we're going to go ahead and plug in the cord for the computer. So I use my computer all the time to print stuff. You can, like I said, you can send it to your machine, but I'm going to show you how to use it for your computer. So we have this cord that it came with. You're going to put this end into the PC right here. And then this end obviously is going to go right into your computer or laptop. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And now I'm going to show you a little bit in the machine how this works. So I'm gonna open it up. And I already have my material set in here. This is the white MDF that I was talking about. So I'm just gonna place it wherever I want, right here. It doesn't need to be exact. And as you can see, my nozzle right here, it's all ready, except we do need to focus it. So you have to make sure this is focused enough so that it cuts properly and engraves properly. So rule of thumb is six millimeter um, difference right here. I have this acrylic piece that it came with for the machine. That's what you're gonna use to focus it. So you can just flip this over. This is six millimeters in thick thickness. So that's what I use to position it. So I'm gonna put it right underneath the nozzle right here. And then we're gonna turn this piece right here to loosen it up so that you can bring it down. So I'm gonna loosen this. And as you can see, this nozzle mo is movable. So we're gonna push it right down to this acrylic piece. Not too snugly, but just enough so it's touching. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it back up. And now it should be in focus. And you can just move that as you can see. So now it's in focus and ready to go. And now I'm going to show you on this control panel right here. So this is where you're gonna move your bed. So I'm gonna just go ahead and press that down just so you can see it once. As you can see, it moves down. I'm gonna move it back up because that's where I'm gonna keep it at. And then these arrows right here, you can use to move the actual laser head. So you'll see it moving as I move the arrows. So you can obviously move it that way as well. So now that everything is ready and set, I'm ready to print it from my computer, which I showed you in Lightburn before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and my settings are already ready to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click start on my computer where I showed you before. Obviously put the hood down first and it will start going. It'll start uh, cutting, engraving and scoring, which I showed you on Lightburn. And we'll see what the end product looks like. Okay, I did forget one thing that's very helpful. I highly recommend doing it almost every time you do a project is the frame feature. You can do it on your computer right here. So you can click this button frame. I always use the square one instead of the circular one, but I'm gonna click that button. And when I do, it's going to show you on the bed where it's going to cut this particular project. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that button and you'll see it move and it'll show you where it's going to cut. So that's really nice. I obviously have it on the material so I don't have to do any modifications to it. So a couple of other things I wanted to mention that you need to look out for. One is controlling the air. So you need higher air for cutting and lower air for engraving. And you can adjust that right here on these controllers. So this is for high volume right here. You can just move this up and down by twisting it. Same thing with the low volume right here. 
So you can adjust those as needed, but you'll also be able to set that feature in Lightburn when you do your settings. You can click high air or not high air. So you can do that for cutting and engraving and you'll know when you go to Lightburn when to do that. Also, another important thing, this was really messing us up at first when we didn't know what was going on. Every time we tried to do a job, then the bed would move up and down when we were trying to autofocus and it just wasn't working out. So we finally figured out what the problem was. So go up here to your tools, this little icon right here, and this box will pop up. And this is when you're going to either enable or disable the Z axis. In our case, we wanted to disable it because it was already on, it was green, and we did not want it on because the bed was moving up and down and we did not want that to happen. So we have to click that toggle and turn it off. All right, here is the finished project and it came out really nice. As you can see in the laser, it was a lot more crispy and there was some burning, but that's fine because we just wiped this off with a paper towel and LA is totally awesome. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. And if you're interested in getting a Thunder Laser, you can reach out to them. The link is in the description box below where you can schedule a call for them. So please feel free to like and subscribe below for future content and we'll see you in the next video.